Ladies and gentlemen, in this RedGamerTech.com video, try it for yourself. You might like it, and maybe the reviews aren't quite right. Maybe they're undervaluing it, right? That seems to be the general gist of things when games which were highly anticipated start getting fairly lackluster, or let's say 7s and 8s out of 10, or maybe even slightly lower, and many people call a game like mediocre. But then people who are anticipating the game, they often reply, well, if you tried the game, maybe you'll like it. You know, just try it for yourself and see what you think. And looking at Drive Club for the PlayStation 4, the game's on the receiving end of some fairly lukewarm review scores. And recently we've just heard news that the PlayStation Plus version of Drive Club is indeed going to be delayed again. And Sony are, so, are citing a multitude of different reasons, but primarily they're citing it's simply because, well, they need more time and serv for servers and so on. Um, basically, they're concerned that it's going to impact the full game. And this has prompted some in the gaming community, and I'm not saying that I 100% agree with this, but it certainly does have some merit in terms of argument that, hey, they're just saying that so that people can just well, we'll go ahead and buy the full game if they want it so badly. And as I said, the game's been receiving fairly lukewarm reception, both from fans, um, or should I say purchased, people who purchased the game pre-ordered it, and from reviews. But once again, the old chestnut of, well, you need to play the game yourself to judge it. So for many, I think, the idea of actually buying a game after negative reviews um, to form an opinion is like putting money in like a slot machine. Let's just be honest here. If you're able to get a title for free, in this case PlayStation Plus, that's one thing. But being asked to cough up, what, £45 or equivalent in your currency for the chance to form an opinion when all the games are mediocre is something many of us just are not simply willing to do. Now sure, for someone like myself, I sometimes get some games for free. Others I have to pay for. It's that simple. Um, for example, for example, Alien Isolation had to buy, well, both Xbox One and PS4 and PC versions. Um, now, obviously, I can sell the console versions, but even so, um, if I didn't like them, if I didn't like the game, I'd be stuck with the PC version. That's just done. So, I think that's why, as well, this whole Gamergate situation has started to spring up, or well, not just started to spring up, but has sprung up, and why so many people are so focused, and that's why even Warner Brothers got a lot of backlash on the whole Batman si uh, I'm sorry, not Batman situation, on the whole Lord of the Rings situation. Sure, the game turned out to be good, but as I pointed out in my ranting video the other day, what about if it hadn't? And you're basically forcing critics to just give, what, positive opinions? That's not a very good way to deal business, in my personal opinion. And that's kind of the problem, isn't it? Let's just be totally and utterly honest right now. We know when we're buying most games, we are not getting everything that that title will offer. In other words, we know there's going to be DLC. We know it. Most games now are already advertising the season pass at the same time as when the initial game is announced. And what makes it worse, not... I mean, for example, when I was actually buying Destiny for the PlayStation 4, um, because I got the Xbox One version for free, but with the PS4 version, I was actually... Uh, I got the Xbox One version for free when I bought my Xbox One. With the PS4 version, on the other hand, um, I was asked, hey, did you want to get the season pass with this? I was just buying the bloody game and I was already in being asked, do I want the season pass? And this isn't new, even Steam right now is promoting season passes, season passes, season passes, where you'll get like all of the DLC. And I was having this discussion with a couple of friends the other day. And some games it's great you're going to get the, D the DLC, you know, you know that you're probably, you're going to support the game and you really want it all. Like Mass Effect, I've, I stand firm in saying that I think Mass Effect, particularly Mass Effect 2 and 3, the DLC was actually pretty solid. There were a couple of iffy pieces, but most of the DLC on Mass Effect was actually really good, and so I purchased it. But a lot of the times, like with the whole Bioshock Infinite fiasco, there's it's like, how good is it going to be? How lengthy is it going to be? And you're buying it on premise and promise. 
Me point being, if you will, that we already know that that's coming up, but we're also pre-ordering quite often on the promise that a game's going to be good. And so I don't necessarily know if I agree when someone says, well, you've got to try the game, you've got to buy the game to know if you're going to like it. And that's why I still feel that reviews are so important um, in today's society. I think it's even more important now because there are less and less and less demos available. Now, I don't think that that's all because of nefarious means because some games, they just know. Like, if they were to do a demo of COD or whatever, they know that people are going to buy the game and they're probably going to go crazy with the demo. But the real reason that a lot of demos are not produced now is because it becomes quite expensive to produce demos. And in fact, there were some studies done where they basically realised some companies it's not always the case but quite often when a demo is actually released it doesn't merit the cost of production for the demo in other words it's not like that demo's release actually increases the level of excitement in fact sometimes it wasn't and i'm sure particularly for certain games um demos actually kind of hurt the sales especially in some cases if the person who pre-orders it say hey you know what this isn't great but that's probably offset by some people who are pulled into the game and they weren't originally going to purchase it so ultimately demos are becoming less and less of a thing um and i don't necessarily think that that's an inherently bad problem but this all once again goes to the same thing of an issue of trust and a lot of the time I can understand why people are just not willing to pre-order games now. Um, I generally do because I want the game on release. If it's a situation where I'm going to review it or cover it, I just need it on release. But if I weren't doing that, for most part, I probably wouldn't pre-order most games. Just saying. Um, there are some where you know they're going to be good. You have a very good feeling they're going to be good because there's generally no rumours of like visual downgrades or uh, murmurings of problems and generally speaking it seems like everything's fairly positive. There are still the occasional stinker which was a bit of a a bit of um a bit of a surprise, but generally most games when they're released, you know, for example Skyrim, you knew for the most part it was gonna be very good. I have to say, however, that those are in the minority and most games now i i honestly my personal opinion is i i'm always very well i guess we're just going to have to see what it's like even on alien isolation i've heard some mixed things some people are having some mixed reactions to it i personally really like the game i haven't actually read any full reviews yet i personally i'm quite liking it from what i've played um i think it's actually so much better than Colonial Marines, but then that's not really saying much. So once again, yes, it is the best option to play the game yourself and form an opinion, but of course that's not always possible to do, and therefore we really, really do need to focus on making sure that you have good access to unedited gameplay footage, for example, from YouTube, great options in for example making sure that the media itself is non-biased and of course and finally and the most important one of all just to make sure that you as a consumer get the best deals you can anyway with that said hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care and bye for now